All right, hello AP 151 students. I'm going to take you through our lab for this week and it's going to be a little bit different so that's why I'll share my screen with you and just walk through a couple of steps. So for the lab for this week, um, April 22nd is when it'll open. You'll go to modules. So this is the AP 151 home screen in Canvas. You'll head over to modules and I've tried to set up these modules so there's everything you need to um, know, do, and submit all the videos you can look at in each module. So hopefully it's not confusing, and I'm sorry it is. We're all kind of learning this together. So here's the next lab for this week, blood pressure and cardiovascular function during exercise. Uh, and by the way, your cardiophysiology quiz is right above it, listed there to take today. Um, but your blood pressure, um, lab modules listed right here. It'll have my blood pressure PowerPoint, which I'll go over in a little bit. And then it'll have a different YouTube video that you can watch about blood pressure basics. I will also upload this video, which you're watching right now here in this spot. And then it'll have this cardiovascular function during exercise assignment. And this is a new lab simulation assignment that I really want to show you how it works. Uh, it says it's worth 100 points, but once you guys complete the lab simulation, um, you need to get at least 70% of the questions right. And I will calculate the percentage you get right together with this blood pressure homework worksheet that you'll submit. And these two assignments combined will be worth uh, 10 points altogether. So I'll come back to this lab simulation, the function during exercise. But here's the blood pressure homework worksheet. It's a PDF file, you need to, you'll need to complete it. Once you guys do the lab simulation, you'll most likely be able to answer a lot more of these questions. So that's the PDF file that you guys will need to complete on blood pressure. And then if we go back to modules, I've put a little place where you can submit that blood pressure homework right away. Um, and again, I'll have it worth 10 points, but those 10 points will include also your simulation exercises. Then your blood pressure quiz, which will open in one week, will be shown at the bottom, which you guys can take in a week. But let's take a look at this lab simulation. So I'm gonna open up cardiovascular function during exercise. It's a learning simulation using the Labster software learning. You'll measure several cardiovascular variables, and run an experiment with several study subjects. So we will load this tool by clicking right here and it'll pull up um, the Lapster simulation. While it's loading, um, hopefully by now you guys notice that Google Chrome works the best for these lab simulations. This lab simulation will be out of 130 points. Each question they ask you is worth 10 points, and if you get one wrong, it takes off two points for every wrong attempt. Um, and you remember, you need to get at least a 70% to pass it. So just take your time doing the lab simulation. Um, it's easy to pass and get all the questions right as long as you just go through it step by step. <clears throat> but I'll take you through kind of what it looks like in here once it finishes loading. So we'll press start. In the simulation, you will perform stress tests on humans to see how the cardiovascular system responds during exercise. Okay, so that's this little robotic machine. She's called Dr. One <clears throat> with a little circle head talking. Um, she walks you through the whole lab simulation exercise. You're in this lab and you even go as far as putting on gloves and putting on a lab coat, so it's pretty fun. Um, it'll take you through kind of how to work. This is your lab pad. You'll press continue. It'll take you through a series of steps about how to use the lab pad. Um, it'll take you through the theory tab, which gives you extra information on the things you'll go over. The media tab will eventually unlock images for you to look at. And then the mission is just the checklist of this lab simulation that you need to get through. You can see your progress listed up here. You can change the volume, uh, the sound effect, the voice, if you want to completely turn her off. There will also be captions. Over here on the upper left, you see your score, zero out of 130 points. Again, you want to get at least 70% right or more, obviously, um, but just keep that in mind. Every question they ask you will be worth 10 points, and then they take off two points for every wrong answer, and she talks you through that. Uh, you can kind of use your cursor to scroll around the lab. There's gloves there. 
There's a mini pod, which is what they call the teleporter. Um, there's two lab workbench stations for an ultrasound and a blood pressure station. There's a wall screen at the front, which will take you through some more subject material. And then that's where you can pick up your lab coat. So again, this is the lab si simulation you guys will work through. The lab pad is always what will take you through and what tells you where to go. And then Dr. One, again, is this little robotic person walking you through it. So hopefully you'll have fun with that um, and learn something. So now I'm going to share my screen with my PowerPoint that I'll walk you through. Uh, so this is my blood pressure PowerPoint. It's a short PowerPoint because I definitely can't get through all about blood pressure that you'll learn in the simulation. Um, but we'll start by talking just a little bit about blood pressure and what that is. First of all, blood pressure is the force per unit area that blood places on the inside of a blood vessel, whether that's an artery or a vein. Uh, blood pressure is the force that the blood places on the wall of that blood vessel. So if blood pressure is too high, it usually means there's some sort of blockage and blood is kind of built up causing extra pressure on that blood pressure or blood vessel wall. That's not good because a blockage could lead to a heart attack or some sort of aneurysm or anything else. Um, if blood pressure is too low, that means not enough pressure is being pushed against the blood vessel wall, which means there's not enough blood flowing through your body delivering oxygen to the tissues. Blood pressure is measured with a fancy cuff that you've probably seen before. It's called a spigmal manometer, and some of you might already know how to measure blood pressure. And we measure blood pressure as a fraction with the systolic blood pressure number on the top and the diastolic blood pressure number on the bottom. So as a fraction, uh, the pressure number on the top of the fraction is the pressure during ventricular contraction. So that'll always be the greater number as the ventricles contract. And the bottom number of the fraction will always be lesser because it'll be the pressure during ventricular relaxation. Pressure is pulsating or pulsatile until it reaches the capillaries. And that's just due to the constant ejection of blood from the heart. And pressure decreases from the aorta to the vena cava. So that means pressure is greatest in the aorta because that's holding all the ejected blood that's coming through it. And pressure is a lot less in your superior and inferior vena cava as blood is returning back to the heart. So here's a look at the differences in pressure as we start in the aorta and move down to the vena cava. <clears throat> Again, the systolic pressure will always be the greater number on the top part of the fraction and the diastolic pressure is on the bottom. 120 over 80 is normal blood pressure and anything greater than 120 over 80 is what we call hypertension or prehypertension, um, meaning some sort of increase in the blood pressure itself. So you'll see here, all of your arteries are in red, the veins are in blue, and you can see how blood pressure really greatly decreases as it gets through your capillaries into your venules, veins, and vena cava. So how to take blood pressure. Um, so if you're using a squeezable bulb, which inflates the cuff with air, you place the cuff around a person's arm, um, right around, kind of right above their elbow, <clears throat> and the inflatable rubber cuff fills with air. And as it fills with air, what it's doing is it's closing off the artery, so no blood can actually get through the artery. So you'll inflate the cuff, fairly high, and then you'll deinflate the cuff or let air out as you're listening for heart sounds, or excuse me, just sounds heard through the stethoscope. And the sounds that you're listening for are actually the blood pulsating through that artery that was closed and starts to open up. So you inflate the cuff, you won't hear any sounds because the artery will be completely closed. And as you start to slowly let the air out, uh, you'll start to hear a first sound as blood is going through right when the artery just starts to open and close. That first sound, when you first hear that sound, you look at the reading on the column of mercury indicating the pressure. And that first sound is what we'll call systole. So that's your first top number in the fraction. Then you'll hear kind of the pulsating beat 
as blood is going through that artery and as the artery is opening and closing, because it's not completely open and it's not completely closed yet. And when the sounds completely decrease or disappear, excuse me, at that pressure reading, that's your diastolic pressure. And that just means your artery is now completely open and blood is completely flowing through. So that's how you actually take blood pressure. Uh, the baroreceptor reflex is, oh, excuse me, is one of body's, the body's homeostatic mechanisms. So it helps to maintain blood pressure homeostasis at nearly constant levels. It provides a rapid negative feedback loop in which an elevated blood pressure reflexively causes the heart rate to decrease and also causes blood pressure to decrease. So this is a reflex. Um, I'll show you where it's located. Decreased blood pressure decreases this activation and causes your heart rate to increase to restore blood pressure levels. The barrel reflex can begin to act in less than the duration of a cardiac cycle. So this uh, reflex is extremely quick acting, fractions of a second. And thus these adjustments are key factors in dealing with postural hypotension. Um, and that refers to the tendency for blood pressure to decrease on standing due to gravity. Um, so you'll notice if you're lying down and you stand up really quickly, you might feel a little lightheaded. That's postural hypotension, tension, uh, the decrease in blood pressure due to your posture. So here's the baroreceptor reflex. Um, there's a baroreceptors that's detecting changes in the arterial pressure located in the arch of the aorta. That sends a response, if it's too high or too low, through the glossopharyngeal nerve. The signal is sent to the medulla of the brain stem and through an interneuron and then a motor neuron system pathway sends out through the vagus nerve, which is cranial nerve number 10, uh, to adjust the heart rate to either increase or decrease it. So the aortic arch baroreceptor axons uh, travel within that vagus nerve pathway. And that's all we have for this week's lab. I would encourage you guys to take your time working through that simulation. Email me if you have any questions. And again, just be sure to finish the lab simulation completely. It'll give me your score automatically and then do the blood pressure homework assignment. Hope you guys are all doing healthy and well. Again, I'm always here. Jacob's here also in his tutoring time. So feel free to ask us any questions. Thanks guys, have a good day.